Hey guys, still here, and welcome to space. I know it doesn't look like much yet, but this is Shipbreaker. Now, Shipbreaker is one of those games where you read the synopsis, or you read the description of the game, and you go, eh, is that going to be fun? Because what you do in Shipbreaker is that, well, you break apart ships. <laughs> yes, yeah, surprising, isn't it? No, what you do in Shipbreaker is you are in space. Earth has been severely... Uh, well, let's say expanding into space, and with that comes space junk, or old ships, or old units, or old stations that are no longer in use. And it is your role as a shipbreaker to clean stuff up. You're basically a recycler, and that means you get to take ships apart with the uh, benefits and perils that come with that. Now, I'm going to talk you through what I have over here. This is the habitation module. This is where I can buy my equipment, my upgrade and such. Um, I don't really have a lot to spend at the moment, nor do I really have a lot to work with. So I'm not going to be doing much of that. Uh, you got comms and data, which I don't believe is actually in the game yet because it is in early access. And there is a certification and the higher certification you get, the higher the rank you get, the more types of things you can unlock that you can actually break apart. And the better your equipment is going to get. Like, for example, I can purchase an upgrade for my Stinger. Now, this is a particular type of set of equipment, and I will go into that a little bit later. This is going to be another series. Uh, I'm saying series. It's going to be at least five episodes, probably, of Calm content, which means no ad interruptions. Just maybe you had one at the start, but that's about it. Uh, the rest of it is just going to be a bit of gameplay and me talking in the background. And I'm actually considering uh, combining this gameplay with a bit that somebody asked me and I thought, you know, that's an interesting thing. Uh, somebody asked me, how are you preparing to be a dad? Because in case you don't know, uh, I have a dad or <laughs> I have a dad coming. No, I have a son coming in September. So yes, I have been preparing some stuff and uh, well, preparing for a child like that is something I've never done before. So he asked me to discuss that a bit and I think I can do both. I can make this both calm content and discuss that a bit. So let's get out there and find something to break down. Um, I'm going to start my shift. I'm going to not continue on the current ship. I'm going to view the ship catalog and see what there is to break apart. Uh, no, I don't want to claim the ship just yet. Let's see, over here we have a station hopper. We have a light cargo ship. Um, and another station hopper. I'll take apart one of these things. And I have three days to do that. Now, one thing you should know uh, before I go into this. The situation for my character is actually quite bad. Because I have a debt... Of 998 million. <laughs> it's going to take me probably a few years to repay that debt in game. So this is a great position to start. But I think it's refreshing. Because normally you have a game where you go, okay, you have zero uh, budget. And you do a quest, you do a mission, you do an assignment, whatever. You gain resources. Whether that's credits or points or wood, iron, whatever. You gain stuff. Here, I'm paying off a debt, which I think is a really nifty mechanic, and I haven't really seen it in any other game so far, at least not that I can remember. Anyway, let's set up the ship catalog. Uh, this is the ship I want to salvage. Now, I don't know exactly everything about it. It has a total value of 4 million. Contrast that with my 998 million level of debt, and that means that, well, I have a bit of work to do. <laughs> I have a bit of work to do before I'm going to be able to refund that. Now this ship has a reactor, it has power cell, and it has a th it has no thrusters apparently. Uh, it has a fire hazard, a frost hazard, a power hazard, and I think that's toxins. It has a bunch of resources on it, but I haven't advanced far enough into the game that I actually know what all of these things are. So let's just claim this thing. And uh, all remaining salvage will be forfeit. Yes, I'll begin. Okay. All right, now. Now that you've completed your training, 
you're only about a billion credits away from paying off your debt to length. I know the thought of making 10,000 credits, let alone a billion, sounds impossible right now. But I can assure you it is within your reach if you put in the work. You got the DNA to be a great salvager one day. Literally. Your report here says your blood work confirmed ideal genetic makeup, physique, intelligence, and psychological profile for the position of shipwreck. I'm guessing that means Lynx thinks you're less likely to blow yourself up. Let's see if they're on to something. Complete your work order and return here to your hab when you're ready for another ship. And careful with that reactor. One false move and you're a goner. And a whole lot of credits pour. Good luck, Cutter. Weaver out. Alright, Weaver is the guy who sometimes talks you through things. Let me talk you through what is currently on screen. Um, what we have in the bottom of the screen, you can see my O2 levels dropping is uh, about 325, 324, 323, so every second I lose a bit of oxygen. That's because my suit can only hold so much. Below that I have a bar that says how much thruster fuel I have, because I am in space. You can see Earth down there, so you can wave hello to yourself, well, sort of, I guess, if you can make out where exactly we are. This thing here below me is the barge, and the barge is the position where you actually drop off stuff. Well, certain types of stuff. Because not everything gets accepted by the barge. Some stuff goes into the processor, and some stuff goes into the furnace. Unfortunately, the HUD tells you exactly what goes where. Now, I have a couple of tools at my disposal. I have this weapon, well, item slash tool that I'm currently using. And this is capable of uh, grabbing stuff. And it's capable of building a tether, which is basically a space rope. And that is able to bring things from one spot to the next. Now, for example, this thruster equipment, this nacelle, is required to go to the barge, as it says so in the middle of the screen. So what I'm going to do is look for the attachment point. And if you press T, you can see what part is the cutting point for this item. And that's this bit. So I'm going to cut this thing off. And that frees up that one. Now this one has to go to the barge. But it's very heavy. Uh, this thing is 700 kilograms. And I can manipulate it a little bit with my grabber. So I can slowly sort of tug it, but that's going to take forever. And I don't have forever, because in 218 seconds, I run out of oxygen. And I'm going to have to end my shift. So I'm going to set up a tether, and that's done by holding right-click, and then right-clicking to where you want that thing to go. Of course, it only works if the item is not obstructed by anything else. I have a work order. It says I need to salvage the power cell, the nano, uh, well, a certain amount of nanocarbons, and um, a class 1 reactor. This, by the way, is the airlock of the ship, and I'll look into that in a minute. I first want to get those nacelles off of the ship so that I can get at least a bit of cash for that. Account credit applied. And the weird thing about this game, as I mentioned, is you go, oh wow, you're basically a recycling worker in space. How exciting. Well, yeah, <laughs> it is. Just like SnowRunner, it has this weird sort of, I want to do this, I want to see how it's going to go down situation. And I think that's very, very interesting. Now, um, I need to find Salvage the reactor accepted. and a power cell and salvage it. So it's time to look inside the ship. Let's have a look at this airlock here. I'm going to fly up to it. I'm going to press F, activate the airlock. That's going to open airlock the airlock. Levels dropping. There we go. Now I can go inside. Now I can activate the internal airlock. So the outer door closes. Pressure levels increasing. There we are. The pressure is completing. And now I should be able to set up the atmosphere. Air pressure level decreasing. Alright, the ship is now unpressurized, which will allow me to start salvaging it. Here's the reactor. So I need to get that reactor out of here. The simplest way of doing that for me right now is just to uh, 
open up these bulkheads and make sure that that lower section of the ship is going to pretty much drop out. Now this part needs to go to the processor, as you can see in the middle bottom of the screen. And that means that I'm going to have to set up a tether from here to there. Caution. Tether supplies are low. Lovely. Hey, Coda. I need you to head back to the kiosk on the starting platform to fill up your yep. O2. Stat. O2 is getting critical. So let's head back. Now I have salvaged a bit of nanocarbon and a bit of metal, as you can see on my work order. So I've gotten a little bit done, but the reactor is still in there. And it's not just that. The power cell is still somewhere in there too. And the real question is, where? I just have to find that. Alright. Um, whoa. Activate the terminal. I need an oxygen supply. There we go. My oxygen has been resupplied, but that just cost me 8,000, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you for your purchase. See, that was another 9,000. Or that's the availability. I'm not too sure which it is, but I am assuming that nothing in space comes for free, let alone oxygen. Anyway, at least now I have a little bit more breathing space, literally. So now I can see if I can pull that reactor out of here. So get to the bottom of the ship, because that's where I removed that one plate. These panels are made of nanocarbons and can also be removed. And everything you see here can be removed. The whole ship can be disassembled. So let's disassemble some more. I'm going to try and get the whole rear of the ship off. In case you don't want to do it in the way that I'm doing it, you can also use this system. This is the welder, or the rather, not so much the welder, this is the split saw. And I can set it up like this and make a horizontal incision and do it again vertical and do it again over there. And now I can just pull this part out and this has to go into the furnace. But it first has to get off the ship. So let's bring this over here-ish. Get down. Now I don't have a lot of tethers available, so I'm gonna have to do it preferably without tethers. I can also sort of toss that thing over, and that's gonna help with the amount of metal that I need. There, it just jumped to 302. Over here we have a fuel tank. And it looks like I can just grab this thing and tear it off, and it needs to go to the barge. Next item. Looks like another fuel tank over there. Yep, it has to go to the barge as well. Off you go. Everything you salvage gets you money. And that's the important part. Now the reactor is clear. Reactors have a tendency to explode if they're not being cooled anymore, unless they make it to the barge at which point they're absolutely fine. There we go. That's my first work order complete. Now, where does one find a power cell? Where are these guys storing power cells? What's all this? This is a soft crate. It has to go to the barge. I'm not sure if this is worth much, but at least it doesn't weigh much. Uh, where is the barge? We are in space, so it is not entirely unlikely that at some point or another you will lose your orientation. Okay, this rear part of the ship has been taken off. Salvage deposit accepted. I think it is mostly, if not entirely, nanocarbon. So, I can immediately get this whole part to the processor. There goes another tether but at least the whole part's moving. So this is the whole stern of the ship, the whole back of it. It's gonna move off to the side and into that processor. Now then, we have a little crawl space over here. I'm going to use my saw, my stinger, to get rid of this. And I wonder, does that already take this thing off? No, not yet. Oh crap. 
Get in while the getting's good. We wrap. Yeah, I don't have a lot of time left. Uh, power cell? Nova fuel. Is that a power cell? No, that's thruster fuel. I can pick it up, but then what? Oh, it's for me. Okay, excellent. I'm sorry, I haven't encountered one of those before. Uh, this would then be a repair kit. Let's collect that and collect. Oh, that's more Nova fuel. Where's your power cell? Power junction box. That could be Whoa, shit. Ow. Yeah. Maybe not try and tear a power pack off the wall just to see what happens. Because it's not pretty. Let's just get that thing out of here. Material, Material deposited. deposited. Good. Ow. <laughs> that cost me quite a bit of health. Uh, and quite a bit of O2 as well, I think. Still, we still got one of these things here. So let's just go to the barge. I don't know if I'm going to make it to that power cell. Secured. Credits deposited. Cutter, make your way back to the kiosk on the starting yes, platform to fill up your own two. Blue Trust me on this one. We've Blue ain't your crawler. <laughs> anyway, to broach the other subject, what have I been doing so far to prepare to be a dad? Well, practical stuff first, of course. Um, we have been preparing the baby room so far. And we have uh, moved to the house where we currently live in uh, 2018. Uh, interesting story there, by the way. Because what happened was we were married for, I think, a week. Uh, maybe two. And that's when we got a, a call that says, hey, um, you are selected as a potential tenant for this place because you've had built up a certain wait period. So uh, you're free to come look. And I thought, okay, I'll go look. My wife was at work, so she couldn't go. I thought, okay, um, we'll just have a look. But usually you got a pretty large waiting list. So my channel, or my, well, my channel, my chance of actually getting in is very remote. Um, as I got to the place, I thought, wow, okay, uh, that's still going to need quite a bit of work. It is rent, so it's not that bad. But still, it needed a fair amount of work. And um, I thought, you know what? I can probably just have a look and I won't get selected anyway. It's not like this is going to be likely whatsoever. Well, <laughs> I was talking to the other tenants and or the other prospects tenants and asked them, hey, what, what, what's your ranking on the list? And they said, oh, I'm, I'm ranked as number 10 or 12 or something. I thought, okay, uh, I'm ranked as number three or four, I think. But if you don't show up to one of these viewings, then you just forfeit your spot. So what happened was that quite a few people had actually forfeited their spot. And with that, my chances, and of course, with that, my wife's chances also increased more and more and more. And as it turned out, we uh, got to get the place if the number one on the list didn't actually started. take it. Time to start wrapping things up. So I thought, we okay, uh, fine. Well, we'll see. But I'm still not that likely to get it. And then the woman said, okay, uh, number one's probably not... Or let's, no, I had to answer right on the spot. If the number one guy on the list didn't want it was I interested uh, I said sure but uh, but I do want to discuss this with my wife because we've been married and we I don't even think we got to see pictures of it so I sent her pictures as quickly as possible Fuck. electrical damage Note oh, that shit. success electrical damage has been found to negatively impact long-term job satisfaction. You mean, don't touch the electrical stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I had been uh, 
just married for a very, very short amount of time, and I was already making almost unilateral decisions about whether we're going to accept this house or not. Anyway, long story short, yes, we accepted it, and yes, we actually live here now. Uh, we moved in pretty quick. And we have this uh, room, the baby room, and it is mostly ready. My wife did a bit of painting, we assembled the furniture that we got off a second-hand uh, address, and that is that ready. And of course, well, that's the easy part, because that's just mostly the furniture. I think the fun's about to begin when, uh, <laughs> when we all get to enjoy the actual arrival of the baby. Anyway, uh, back to the game for a second. Work order review, not quite done. I'm still in progress, but I still have a few more shifts for this one. I still need to salvage more metal, more nanocarbon, and I still need to find a power cell. So my shift right now is completed. I managed to get 950,000 worth of items. And that reduces my debt to a mere 997 million. So it's all good. Right, that's the salvage total. Uh, let's see, I did have some equipment upgrades available. What I have right now is um, my modular cut laser cutter. This is the system that I use right now. I have the handheld utility grappler, and this is the item that I use to toss stuff over. So if I tear some part off, this is what I use. Let's see what upgrades I have for the laser cutter. Uh, this is gonna add a bit of range, which is nice. And it's gonna cost me... 308... no, 150 out of 380, so yes, I can afford that. And the 5, 6, 7, etc. that you see are required ranks. So, if I level up to rank 5, I'm gonna get access to the split saw and the next tier of that split saw. So it's going to add up more range on that thing. Now I also have heat capacity, so I can have the uh, the laser the laser cutter on longer. And this is cool down so it cools down faster. Let's see what else do I have? I can upgrade my helmet. Yeah, O2 capacity plus 100. That's nice. But that is about all I can get because now my credits are gone. So let's start with the next shift. All right, let's find that power cell and also cut off some more of the ship so I can get the salvage for the nanocarbon and the salvage for the metal done. Anyway, uh, my wife's doing quite well with the pregnancy so far. It's been, uh, what was it? I think she's 26, 27 weeks in. I know that you're probably supposed to know this, but I don't. <laughs> I don't know that. Uh, anyway, she's doing well. And I think that, especially with summer, it's going to get a little bit less comfortable. Because as it's, well, it's not really... Maybe not known as the right term, but uh, it's generally supposedly not very comfortable to be pregnant when it's really hot outside. So that's something that I hope she'll be able to deal with. Uh, and that I hope that the summer isn't going to be too warm. But the promise is that the summer is, in fact, going to be quite warm. Now, let's see, where do I find a power cell? All right, I've got this nanocarbon done. Oh, I destroyed thruster class. Whoops. Um, let's enter the vision system. This is my scanner. Informs me where exactly certain items are. And I can see that there's the airlock. The reactor was back there. We got... Uh, crawl space, cockpit... What is that? Aluminum panel. Okay, what's behind that? Let's have a look. Do some surgery. Hello. Oh, you're a coolant tank. Alright. 
I think you're a bit big, buddy. I might need to do some more surgery on the ship to see if I can get that out of here. So that one, that one. Oh, it's getting a bit warm. If you keep your cutter on for too long, what will happen is that you will get burned. Because you're keeping a very hot object on for too long and it overheats. That was really close. And it's actually going to start to do damage to yourself. So you just lose health. Um, this should be fine. I cut off the components here. Yeah, I think the whole section is already drifting apart. There we go. I can use my own thrusters a bit to have an impact on it. it seems to be mostly nanocarbons. Let's see if I can drag that in there. That's a really big component. It's mostly nanocarbons, so let's see if I can get one tether to go very far. There you go. That should make it a bit easier to get this coolant tank out of here. So grab it. That has to go to the bar, so we're going to send that right down. Goodbye. It's still not what I want, though. Where is that power cell? If I didn't already destroy it outright. Hold on, maybe there's a slightly more elegant solution for this. Just to just try and dismantle this ship. I need to get into the crawl space here. How do I do that? Hello, what are you? You need to get to the furnace. Alright, buddy. Off you go. Right, the furnace. The furnace, the furnace. This is a repair item. What is that? That's a light. That's not very interesting then. Let's weld this thing open. There's the crawl space. There, that's where I want to be. Now I can hopefully detach enough of this ship also send that part flying off. I still have about nine, no, almost ten minutes left on this shift, so I should have enough time. Right. Um, is that enough for this section? Possibly. Is it an aluminum panel? No, it's not enough yet. It's still attached somewhere. Let's just get rid of all the sections here. Nope, that wasn't warm enough. Have to cool down a bit. There you are. Next section here. Is that enough to make this thing move? It should be. Alright, this has to go to the processor because it's mostly nanocarbons. Whee! There goes one section. I only have two tethers left. You, join that one. Yep, there goes another bulkhead. Oxygen reserves oh, crap. are low. All right, time to top Valuable up on oxygen again. Now, one thing that I started doing early on, or well, uh, one book that I got early on from my wife when we know when we knew that she was pregnant, and yes, I'm saying she is pregnant, not we are pregnant. I hate people who say that. Oh, we are pregnant and we are expecting a child. No. Your wife is pregnant, period. It's really that simple. As guys simply cannot get pregnant. 
Now, um, a, a book that she got me, which was really funny, was Commando Dad. And it's, um, as the title sort of implies, oh shit, I should have bought tethers. As the title sort of implies, it's allowing for a sort of military way to inform you how to handle a baby and how to, uh, well, <laughs> how to survive, I think, the first weeks to first years. But in a very, very funny way. Oh, look at that. My, yep. My debt actually goes up the more shit I buy. Oh, fuck. Um, it's a really funny book, Commando Dad. And it has done some prepping. But a book that I found much more interesting is a different one. And it's called The Book You Wish Your Parents Had Read. And it's about how to build a proper relationship with your child. And how to, let's say, sort of take care of the emotional needs and how to communicate properly. Now, communicating has always been uh, a fascination of mine. How do we communicate? How do you uh, talk about certain items or certain things that might either be uncomfortable or uh, be things that people are dealing with? In my home... Uh, with my parents, we never really did that. I think that my dad also had a, a fairly tough upbringing in the sense that not a lot was shared. Nothing was talked about, it was just there. And it's, it's a bit sad in that way. But I think that a failure to communicate or a failure to properly build a bond with your children, and I'm not saying... My dad failed at building a bond, but I think it could have been just so much better. Um, I think stuff like that also gets passed on from family to family. Or from generation to generation. And I mean that in a way that if the previous generation fucked up, if the previous generation didn't know how to properly communicate, then it's entirely possible that the next generation also doesn't know how to communicate properly or how to how to bond how to talk and that's something that i absolutely wanted i wanted to get that right it's something that i've been reading about for a long time uh, i think it's partially what prompted my previous career as a trainer in body language so it was a very important element for me and um that book is really really good I can really recommend that if you are, uh, well, let's say if you are becoming a parent, maybe it's going to be handy, but also if you, whoops, um, if you are just interested in communication in the first place, like how does that work and, and what's the deal with that? And maybe also why your parents didn't communicate properly for whatever reason that is. Come on, let's get this panel out of here. Yeah, bit more, bit more, bit more. Ah, stuck. Fine. I still don't know what the power core is. Deposit salvage, yes, I would like that, but I don't know how. Let's get this seat. That has to go there. 3 minutes 48 left. I should have one more salvage shift after this one. You, come here. And down you go. Whoa, where's the chair? Oh, it didn't make it out of the ship. Come here. Here and down. Poof. Okay. This is stuff that goes into the processor. I think this part might still be attached. Yeah, there's supposedly a cutting point somewhere back here. Let's pick up that fuel for my thrusters. Where? Oh, here. There's another one up there. But I think that's the cargo hatch. So that's not what I'm looking for. I'm trying to get the cockpit dismantled, because I think computer terminals might be expensive. And with that, 
worth something if I salvage them. We only have a 997 million debt, so it's all good. Not a problem. Computer terminal secured. Good. A storage bin. Let's get that to the barge. What you got there? Salvage deposit accepted. Credits transferred. Let's see. Let's see if I can get this cargo hatch off. O2 is already starting to drop again. Yep, cargo hatch is off. Okay, the cargo hatch can also go to the barge, which is over there. Whoa, what's my orientation? And where's the hatch? I just tore the hatch off of here. Where the hell did I leave that? All right, let's see if I can get this into the processor. You the hatch? No. 90 seconds left on this shift. Better make it quick. Let's get those tethers off quickly. And maybe this is not worth it. I don't know. Maybe I'm not quite doing this the right way. Because maybe this stuff just isn't valuable enough to be warranting the use of tethers. Warning. Your oxygen reserves are Shit. dropping below statistically profitable levels. <laughs> My right, oxygen Cutter. levels Wrap are dropping below profitable levels. Left. Right. Anyway, I'm excited at the prospect of becoming a dad for more than one reason. Um, a very important reason for me is because it's going to sort of allow me to see the, the world, or at least force me to see the world in a different way. Not just from the perspective of the child in the sense that, oh, everything is a lot bigger now, but also in the sense that they don't understand concepts that you understand. Now, our plan is to raise the child bilingual, so it's going to be Dutch-English, and I was talking about that with my brother the, uh, the other day. And we said, you know what, um, sometimes, oh crap, my time's out. Sometimes it can be a problem. Um, because the child will only know a particular language very well, and they're certainly going to start um, talking in, let's say, in two languages at the same time without them knowing, because they don't understand what a language is. They simply don't have the concept for that yet. Which makes a lot of sense, of course. You don't get born with an, an idea of, ah, okay, no, yeah, no, got it. That, that is English. That's where English starts and stops. And this is where Dutch starts and stops. You don't get that. You just have to learn that. And it's going to be very interesting to see how the child reacts to that and develops with that and how I can help him learn. Because it is a boy. We already know that. All right. Um, that is it for this video. The shift that I just did brought in 1 million. So the next shift might also bring in a million, but that's for the next video. Next video is probably going to be in about a week. I don't want to have these things too close together. Let me know what you think of the game and, more importantly, the format. I think the game lends itself fantastically well for calm content. And um, I'll be doing a, a bit of work in the meanwhile, of course, to just speed up the gameplay and unlock some new tools and stuff like that. And at the same time, um, talk about more kid stuff as it develops. Let me know what your thoughts are. Um, I'm very much open to feedback, as you know. So anything constructive down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then please consider go getting the game. Early access, 20 bucks only at the time of recording. Link down below in the description. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you soon for another episode.